Hello there, everybody. This is Drunk Number 1645, and there's a fire truck going by. Yay! What a great start, huh? Anyways, welcome to my new Let's Play of Ace Combat 4 Shattered Skies. This is actually recording attempt number two. The reason is because the last time I recorded this, I was able to complete the first mission successfully. However, the audio for the video lagged drastically. It was just out of sync, and it pretty much means I have to start all bloody over again. It's just bullcrap. But, whatever. Also, another thing I want to mention, I actually stumbled across this last time in my previous recording attempt. If you leave the title screen on long enough, this little scene thing actually plays. I actually find it pretty interesting. And by the way, this is live commentary, so if this thing does not work this time, then that means I cannot record on my HD BBR with PlayStation 2 games using live commentary. However, I don't know for sure. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to do something to make this damn thing work. Anyways, let's get started. First, I'm going to load up the game load up my previous playthrough, my previous clear data. The reason why I'm loading up my previously clear data is to carry over all my funds and all the planes that I have acquired during my previous playthrough of Ace Combat 4. So, re- ah! I'm kind of getting ahead of myself and I'm stumbling in a couple of places, including my speech. Oh, God. Yeah. Whatever, let us begin. Special Continue is basically a new game plus of games like Chrono Trigger and like uh, other Final Fantasy games. Just, yeah, basically you, you can change the difficulty. Ah, no, you can't change the difficulty once the game begins. Anyways, in this playthrough, I'm going to be playing through the game on expert difficulty. The reason is because I can and it's fine. And Ace Combat 4's hard difficulty is not very hard at all, surprisingly. So, let's play on Expert and hopefully this game will actually give me a challenge. So, let's just get started now. I was just a child when the stars fell from the skies. But I remember how they built a cannon to destroy them. Hmm, sound familiar to anybody? And in turn, how that cannon brought war upon us. War was an abstract idea, nothing more than a show on TV. Kind of like the Sopranos? As a child, I only saw it as something that happened in some faraway land. Until that final day of summer. One day, while on my way to school, I looked up in the skies. A sound like distant thunder. In the blue skies far above me, contrails drew dizzying circles around in a crazy waltz. A battle in the beautiful skies far away. I could not tear my gaze away from them. swiftly into the sky. One fleeing plane fell out of the skies, spiraling and spewing orange flames to crash by the cape. The same cape where my family lived. Now they only live in my memories of days past. The victor circled around to confirm the kill. And on his craft, there was a large number 13, emblazoned in yellow. I will never forget this. The Allies retreated across the ocean before the onslaught of the enemy. Our little town in the heart of the mainland fell into deep isolation. Hmm, 
wow, that is some really interesting situation. I mean, it's some interesting information. That's what I meant to say. More cinematics. Four years after the planet fall of the Ulysses 1994 XF04 asteroids, Stonehenge, the erosion weapon of mass destruction, was originally built to shoot down asteroids. Upon discovering its potential as an anti-aircraft weapon, the erosions ruled the skies over the mainland. The ISAF's attempts to destroy Stonehenge through airstrikes failed. As a result, strategic positions on the mainland were lost. This in turn forced ISAF to evacuate from the east coast to North Point. ISAF GHQ is regrouping its remaining combat forces at North Point. However, the erosions control most parts of the mainland, and they have forward deployed bombers to Wrigley Air Base, a former ISAF facility. This bomber force will attempt to deal a lethal blow to the ISAF at North Point from this strategic position. Here is the current SIDREP and your orders for deployment, effective immediately. Enemy agents destroyed our early warning radar network, allowing several bear bombers to penetrate our airspace. In 15 minutes, we expect this bomber formation to strike Allen Ford Air Base, and then move on to targets at North Point. Our air defense forces are extremely weak at this point in time, hence our GHQ is a sitting duck. It is mission critical that you destroy the bombers and neutralize the threat before they get past New Field Island. Remember, you are the first line of defense for North Point, and the fate of ISAF lies in your hands. Okay, well we pretty much are given our objective now, and our mission is very simple for the first mission anyway. Our mission, we have to take down six enemy bombers and any escort fighters that are flying alongside them. However, taking down, down all the bombers will result in mission accomplished. So, if you want to attack the... Just attack the supporting uh, air force and gain some extra points. Basically, in this game, points do actually matter. At least in this game, and I think in Ace Combat 5, which is actually you know, the next number up in the series, even though technically... Ace Combat Zero came after Ace Combat 4. Eh, I'll go into more detail when I do that Let's Play in the future. Don't know when, but whatever. Anyways, let's start up the mission. Whenever we begin a mission, we can go to the hangar and select whatever plane we wish to use. At the start of the game, when your first playthrough, you're going to be given the F4E fighter. Eh, when I think about it, it's not that good. It has very low stats on everything except for defense. Defense is pretty good, but not that great. And also, the secondary weapon for this craft is not very useful. It only has, like, a large unguided bomb. To tell the truth, unguided bombs aren't all that useful in this game. However, in some situations, they are a, ne a, they are a necessity. So, yeah, the best plane I got right now is the F-15 Active. It may actually be known as something else. Most it, it, ah, whatever. Read the description if you want. What? Ah, let's go. When we select our plane, we can select a secondary weapon. Secondary weapons, I think each plane can carry at least two of them. However, you can only select one when you begin the mission. In this case, I only have the XMAA missiles for my secondary weapon. They have, uh, very good range and good accuracy, and they are very useful for, take, useful for taking down targets at a long distance. I mean, not too long of a distance as, say, a sniper rifle, but still, it's a pretty good amount of distance, I'll just say that much. So, let us begin mission one for the second time for me, first time for you, and hopefully, I pray to God that the sound is not lagging. Alright, let us get started. Jeez, I've been saying I'm rain a lot. What's hey, wrong here. Call sign Sky Eye. Do you read? Your call sign is Mobius 4. We will refer to you by this name at all times. You are now under my command. Six bombers on Vector 360 confirmed. Continue north to intercept. Today's my birthday. A victory sure would be nice. 
Mobius One, engage. Okay, so AWACS is pretty much our commanding officer throughout the missions. And, however, he's not the same person who gives us our mission briefing and stuff like that. The controls for this game, push and hold the R1 button to accelerate, to accelerate, and push and hold the L1 button to decelerate. Push the circle button to fire missiles, and push and hold the X button to fire your machine guns. You can see how many missiles you have on the bottom right hand corner of the screen by looking at the missile indicator. And also, look, look at the... If you manage to actually look at the XMAAs, so that pretty much tells you how many secondary weapons that you have left. To change between different targets, just push the triangle button. And the square button, because this game is actually pressure sensitive, Push and hold the square button and you can actually pull up your radar. The harder you push and hold the square button, the bigger the radar is available to you. Also, another thing I want to mention is difficulty wise, uh, not only will the enemy steal more damage to you, but also depending on what difficulty you play, it may take one missile to take down an enemy on easy difficulty, however on like difficulties like normal and up, or more harder, it actually takes two missiles. And that's basically that. And another thing, I think normal and easy difficulty allow you to have infinite ammo on your machine gun. However, on hard difficulty and expert difficulty, that is not the case. And mission accomplished, again. And I pretty much completed the same amount of time, and I eliminated more targets. This is Alan Fort. Got visual on the downed bombers. Whose kill was that? Make sure to thank him. That's a roundup. Let's go on home. And that basically is the mission, and basically how to play all this other crap. Very simple, simple mission. I'll just say that much. Uh, there was something else I wanted to mention, but the freaking uh, Allied pilots interrupted me, and now I can't remember what I wanted to say, damn it. Uh, I hate that. Whatever, let's just go. Thanks to your efforts, the enemy bomber strike was averted. However, our victory will be meaningless should you fail the next mission. Of course. Anyways, for every mission you complete, you get a set reward. Wow, I actually improved over last time, too. Last time in the last recording session, I actually got an A rank. And I actually got the best rank possible in this part, in this recording attempt. And that is the S rank. You get a rank bonus alongside your reward bonus for completing each mission. Your rank is determined by how many targets you take down and I think also how fast you complete the mission as well. As you can see on the right there's a different kind of there are different plane types that you have taken down throughout the mission and also different kinds of targets that you have taken down and also just tells you how many of each you have taken down as well. And, well, each plane is worth a certain number of points. And later on in the game, we will have to take the point factor into consideration. Because some missions actually require you, require you to get a set number of points before you can actually complete the mission. And if you run out of time, well, then, uh, that means mission fail. Oh. I think I've mentioned this already, but I am not sure, but I think, whatever. What I'm trying to say is, uh, depending on the difficulty, the time limit becomes more and more strict for each mission. Expert difficulty introduces the most strict time limit. However, I'm not absolutely sure if this is true or not. But, as you have noticed in the last mission, it obviously gave me only about 10 minutes to complete the mission, which, again, isn't too bad. And not the most strict, depending on, I mean, because of the first mission and all that crap, but whatever. The time limit's going to be even more strict for later missions, and it's going to become even more difficult as we progress. progress. That's what I meant to say. And as for uploads, I'm going to upload this daily whenever possible, so... You have that to look forward to. Let us continue now.
The war seemed to unfold in the blink of an eye. I don't remember exactly when the forces from the West occupied my town. I was too busy scanning the skies day after day, waiting for Yellow 13 to reappear. Before I knew it, everything changed. The language they taught us at school. Our friendly local sheriff disappeared and was replaced by foreign MPs. In the beginning, some people secretly tuned into broadcasts from North Point on their parabolic antennas. But as time passed, the broadcast no longer came in. Maybe the satellites were destroyed. All non-military computer networks were shut down. Gasoline was rationed to civilians. Though we lived in the 21st century, we were reduced to using crystal radios and horse-drawn carts. I moved in with my uncle in town, who used to be a taxi driver. Out of gasoline and out of work, my uncle did nothing but to drown himself in drink. I earned my keep by playing the harmonica in the town bar, the one thing I was good at. I'd play for sullen occupation soldiers in exchange for their charity and loose change, and used the money to support my uncle and myself. My uncle trash-talked the barkeep who catered to the enemy soldiers, but he never refused the money I brought home. As for myself, I had a crush on the barkeep's only daughter, who was a little older than me. Another day passed, yet still no sign of the fighter plane Yellow 13 in the skies above our town. Hmm. Wow. That, that was really interesting. And, yeah, that's basically going to be that. And another thing I want to mention right now and how I'm going to be splitting these videos... I'm going to be splitting this video as, like, one video per mission. If uh, a mission takes me longer than 20 minutes, I'll probably split it into parts. If it takes, like, 25 minutes or something, then uh, I'll just include the entire mission no matter what. However, if it takes me, like, 30 minutes to 45 minutes to complete a mission, sometimes longer, I'll just split the mission into parts, as I've mentioned before. So... Anyways, this is Drunk Goomba 1645. I will see you guys next time for more A Let's Play Ace Combat 4 and begin mission 2 of this game and hopefully we'll be able to progress and hopefully the audio will be fine. I sure as hell hope so. Anyways, I will see you guys next time for more Let's Play Ace Combat 4. Bye!